Okay, so we've got our, our pretty big, beautiful walleye. So I want you all to imagine, you look down the trough, you see the walleye. You can go ahead and do this with me. You grab her by the, by the tail. You put one hand under her belly and you shove her armpit, her nose into your armpit. So you're holding her nose. It's, it's, you learn how to do it pretty fast because you got about 100 fish to, and you got about 10 minutes to get them all done. Boom, boom, boom. So you grab her, you shove her nose in your armpit, and you're holding her tail here. Now, you take your other hand, you make a nice little cup, and you run it along her belly. And you're holding her urogenital opening. Urogenital because it is a one opening for all business kind of affair. So urine, feces, and eggs are all going to come out the same place. A lot of animals have urogenital openings. Chickens do too. So you're holding her like this, you're squeezing her belly, and out of her urogenital opening shoots the prettiest stream of bright golden eggs you've ever seen, and you shoot those into a bucket. Now you look at her tail. If there are no clips in her tail, you take the pair of hedge clippers that you've got in your pocket, you clip a triangle out of her tail. There's not a whole lot of nerve in the tail, they don't really seem to feel it. And then you make a mental note in your brain, and you throw her back over. You do that for about 10 females. Squeeze, clip, throw, squeeze, clip, throw. Then you get one male, you hold him, they're little. You tickle his belly, he sperms into the bucket. You shake the bucket up, slap a lid on it, push him to the bench. Go to the next net. At the end of each of those, so you've got, you're, you're probably handling 100 fish in 10 minutes or less. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe. No, it's probably that fast, actually. Um, at the end of each net pull, the captain will say, what was your count? And the count you have to give him is this. Females, males, marked. There's another category, but we won't talk about that one. Delts. Um, so maybe in that 10 minutes, you got 27 females, 4 males, and five marks. So here's our fish. Fishy, 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 oh. <laughs> that's a fish that's never been caught this year. Copy, paste. That's a fish that has been. She's got a notch in her tail. That tail will heal by next year. It'll regrow. But this year, if you catch one who's already got a notch in her tail, you know she's a recapture. Okay. The captain keeps a running list of all of these. And then at the end of the shift, he gives those numbers to the biologists. They plug those into a calculator, and they can actually get a pretty good estimate of the population. This technique is called mark and recapture because you look at the total number of <clears throat> fish you caught, <clears throat> and what percentage of those have been caught before, and that allows you to estimate the population. It, some years I've done a mark and recapture lab in biology. We're not going to do it this year. Um, we're a little bit pushed for time with all the snow days, but um, you can do it with, like, lima beans, dried lima beans, and you put a little X on the bean and throw it back in the bag, and you can estimate your population. You can get pretty close, um, but with a species that's really mobile like that, you kind of need that. Okay, so here... So what we're studying here really are population dynamics. Dynamic just means something that is changing all the time, and populations are changing all, all the time. So there are a couple measures of populations that are what we most commonly look at to see how they're changing. So what do you think the big things we would measure about a population, how it changes, would be? Like, what do you, what do you think we would look at to see how a population changes? How about how many are born and how many die? Oh, that would work. <laughs> so how many are born and how many die, the birth rate and the death rate, really you know, are sort of at the basis of how the population is changing. So birth rate, everybody gets that, number of births um, that occur over a certain period of time, how many offspring come into the population. 
and the death rate is just the number of deaths in, and we usually use per year um, with most species. You know, how many are born per year, how many die per year. So what if, so let's, let's talk about my walleye. So after we finished filling that bucket on the walleye boat with eggs and sperm, and we, we would really fill it with eggs and we'd put a little bit of sperm in there, we probably had a million fertilized eggs in a bucket. I mean, we had a lot of fertilized eggs in there. So those would go off to a place called the Linesville Hatchery in Pennsylvania. Has anybody been to Pima Tuning? No? Okay. It's, it's a lake up north. It's even bigger than Mosquito. Um, they have a fish hatchery there, and they work with both the state of Ohio and the state of Pennsylvania, um, Division of Wildlife, and whatever. I think it's Fish and Game over there. And they will take that bucket of eggs and sperm, and they will very carefully put them in conditions which will allow them to mature into baby fish. And when those baby fish, so like four weeks later, we would get a call from the hatchery saying, your fish are ready. And what we would pick up would be boxes. And those boxes were probably about one foot by one foot and probably about a foot and a half high. And inside that box was a heavy duty plastic bag and that heavy-duty plastic bag was actually sealed up with a very heavy-duty rubber band because inside that bag were a couple million baby fish. And when you opened the box and looked inside the bag, it looked like just, it was like moving the whole, they were packed so tightly and they're literally, at this stage, they're not even fry yet. They're called two eyes in a wiggle because it literally is two eyes and they're about that big. They are teeny little things. Like you can't make out individual ones. You just see that the, whatever's in the bag is dark and it's all moving. So we would go out on the boat. Here's the boat again. And there are the three crew, me and the two guys, two old guys with lots of stories about fish. It's a great eight weeks, let me tell you. And the guys hand me tube, clear plastic tube, about 30 feet long, with a weight on one end. Now let me ask you, what do you think would like to eat baby fish that are that big? Everything. Everything would like to eat them. Little fish would like to eat them. Slightly bigger fish would like to eat them. Birds would love to eat them. If you just spread those out on the surface of the water, they will all be eaten in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, I know. It's a really tough life. So the goal is to get them as far down in the water as you can. So hence the 30 foot long tube with the weight on the end. So the guy said to me, okay, you gotta start a siphon. Do you know what a siphon is? So when you get water flowing through a tube and it'll keep pulling water. So you can most, like with a little tube, you start a siphon by hand, you suck water up into the tube and then lower it down and it'll continue to pull water. Well, with a tube that long and it was this big round, I can't start, and they, no, no, no. Just hold it in the water until there's water running through it. And then you quickly dunk it into the open bag of fish that's sitting on the deck of the boat. And sure enough, those little tiny fish get the most amazing amusement park ride of their lives. And then suddenly they're all down here. And it would, it would take us probably four hours and we would probably stock 10 million baby fish in four hours. Now, let's talk about the other term on this, which is life expectancy. So, life expectancy is on average how long an individual is expected to live. Do you think a lot of those baby fish saw their first birthday? Many of them didn't even see the next day <laughs> um, because everything wants to eat them. They're little, they're delicious, they're a good source of everything, you know, calories. So a lot of them probably died in the first 24 hours they were in the lake. Um, well, that's okay because a lot of them were born. 
Now, who you said you've all gone fishing? Have you ever caught a really big fish? Uh, okay, me either. I suck. Um, <laughs> but I like drowning worms and just sitting on the shore and looking at the lake. Um, there are enormous walleye in the world. I mean, this this lady right here is a big, fat, beautiful walleye. No, no, no. There she is. She's big. I mean, she she might be five or six years old. She made it to her first birthday and then some. But a lot of walleye die in the first year. So life expectancy is how long an individual is expected to live, but it's not the same as will you make it that far. So let's think about humans with life expectancy. What what do you think life expectancy is for a male person in the U.S.? So for males, life expectancy is some, we'll say around 77. Um, what do you think it is for females? I think it's actually 79. It's, it's longer than men. We know women live longer than men. Um, single males in nursing homes are a hot commodity because there are very few of them. They're usually outnumbered about 10 to 1 by women. So that's for humans. Does that mean that we have no 80-year-olds? No 100-year-olds? Does that mean nobody dies at 30? No. Life expectancy is the average. So for walleye, you know, a whole lot of them die on day one. They make it to zero years. But then there are some who live, there might be some who live eight to ten years. Once you've lived that long, what's going to eat you? You're a big fish with big teeth. You're not prey for anybody but someone who wants to catch you and eat you for dinner who's a human. Oh, I love walleye. Mm. Anyway, life expectancy doesn't necessarily determine how long someone lives, but it's on average. So let's actually talk about humans in the Middle Ages. I don't have separate figures for males and females. What do you think life expectancy was in the Middle Ages? Less than it was today. Less than it was, is today, for sure, like yeah. Okay, yeah, and it's usually, you know, people will say, oh, it's like 35 or something. It's really young. Does that mean that people died commonly at 35? Okay. So let's imagine we represent the entire human population with 10 individuals. And so we have somebody who lives to 70, somebody who lives to 60, somebody who lives to 90, somebody who lives to 40, somebody who lives to 80. Now, what do you know about babies in the Middle Ages? They didn't get eaten. They didn't. A lot of them died. A lot of them never saw their first birthday. You've been vaccinated. You've been vaccinated against measles and mumps and diphtheria and pertussis and polio. There were no such things. And, I mean, a lot of people, like the common parenting wisdom, even in the 1800s, well, don't get attached until their first birthday. Because, oh, it's crushing. I can't imagine. So many babies died before they hit a year old. I mean, I can give you an example from my own family. My Grand, my great grandfather was one. His mother had 17 children born. 11 of them survived to adulthood. That was not uncommon that you buried a number of children. Go look in the cemetery up at Pancake Clarkson. Look at how many children's graves there are. It just happened. I mean, children are pretty susceptible, especially infants. They, they die of all sorts of things if Huh? Yeah, but but prior to modern medicine, prior to vaccinations, prior to, I mean, you know, your baby gets an infection, we give it an antibiotic. We have that. 100 years ago, they didn't. 500 years ago, a lot of infants died. So let's take that into account in our average here. What if we have one, two, what if half the people born never see their first birthday. So our average life expectancy here, I'm going to add up all these numbers, 70 plus 60 plus 90 plus 40 plus 80 plus five zeros, divide by 10. That gives us an average life expectancy of 34. Does that mean people are dying at 34? No, plenty of them are living to ripe old ages. 
but that that infant mortality brings that number way down. So when you when so, and people will say, well, you know, in the Middle Ages, people people didn't live to be that old. They only lived to be like thirty. No, that was infant mortality. It skews the average. Same thing for a species like walleye or rabbits. How many baby rabbits never make it their first three months? They get out of the. I mean. Good Lord, baby rabbits, they get out of the nest and then a cat eats them or a coyote eats them or they get hit by a lawnmower or, you know, like, oh, black rat snakes will eat baby bunnies. I mean, just they're little. They die easy. Little things tend to die easy. So that's just sort of a, a, a brief piece. Now let me ask you this. Oops, i got to get rid of my big beautiful lady walleye here. Thinking back to the walleye. So if we stocked 10 million, if we had 10 million walleye born, and 10 million walleye died, has the population of the lake changed of walleye? Has the population size changed, I should say? No. If 10 million are born and 10 million die, guess what? Population numbers stay the same. The size of the population remains the same. Is it the same 10 million fish? No, it's different fish. It's different fish. <laughs> we got new fish. <clears throat> but the population size is stable. If birth and death rates are equal, the size of the population is stable. Okay, we're going to stop there. And tomorrow... We're going to start in on a little bit about survivorship. Actually, you know what? I'm going to assign a video for homework tonight um, on survivorship curves. Then we're going to start with modeling population growth tomorrow.